Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen. This episode took a um, a weird turn this evening. How many people out there believe in serendipity? How many of y'all know what that means? Um, in my opinion, it's taking a uh, a weird situation and turning it into uh, something that's good and that you didn't even see happening. You know, like um, we have that happen in our lives all the time where we see something that we just think is like, you know, no, this is the shittiest thing in the world. You know, this is going to be all bad. And then it actually turns into something um, either meaningful or hilarious. Um, so as always, we're going to start off with a little tune. Uh, this song is by uh, um, Corrosion of Conformity. That's yeah, called Trucker. And I like this song. It starts off a little bit slow, but it really gets you going and it kicks ass. And uh, I like it. And hopefully you do too. If not, turn the channel. You know, you can do whatever you want. So here we go. With a little tune. And uh, then we'll get going after that.
And there we go. I guess that's going to kick us off here at a uh, salty 4.13 a.m. Um, where I was going to start the whole conversation tonight is a completely opposite place from where I'm going to start it now. And that happens sometimes. And um, as I said before, we call that um, serendipity. We call it paradox. We call it a duality in life. Something I've been um, arguing with recently. I mean, I, I've got five o'clock shadow since I started this thought process earlier in the day, you know. And um, I mean, I've been working on uh, motorcycles and this and that and everything, thinking about all this stuff. But I had a conversation come up with somebody this evening, and it came completely out of left field. And it actually turned into a, a fairly hilarious conversation, you see, because. I mean, oftentimes, I don't, I don't speak to many people. I mean, you all out there are probably about it. And I mean, really, my relationship with you is through a camera. You know, I mean, it's, it, it doesn't mean it's not real. It doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter. But I don't have a lot of, um, I guess you could say, uh, friendships or relationships like that. I mean, for the most part, I'm, I, I, I stick to myself. I do my own thing, you know. I don't. Um, I don't go to bars. I don't, I don't. I don't like that whole thing. I used to do that stuff, but it's not me. I don't like it. So I just kind of stick around, and I do my thing at home, and I do this because I like. I like to hash my thoughts out here um, with all you guys. Yeah. Um, maybe that as it may, take it how you, how you will. And look, I already have microphone problems. Imagine that. But I was going to get off on, um, you know, some, some of the political shit that's going on right now. You know, excuse me while I adjust this. I'm sorry to do this in the middle of the deal. There we go. That's a little better. Um, I'm talking about Biden and his whole $6 trillion deal. And you, we've got to look at all this stuff and, and, and just have a sense of humor about it, I think, at this point in time. I mean, it, it's it's folly. And here's where I'm going with this. And this is all going to come full circle, and you might understand it once I get through what I have to say. You know, um, I've, I've paid attention to the matters that have been on the news. And I listen to it, and I get wound up. And I get upset about it. And I want to sit there and wag my finger and say, well, that's the wrong decision. And, you know, you're screwing up and blah, blah, blah. This guy doesn't know where he's at. Um, but if you look at it as uh, necessary folly, and, and you look at it like the fact that the leader of the free world doesn't know where he's at and doesn't know what he's saying, and it's just making things up off the cuff and, and just stumbling around and, and saying goofy shit. I mean, it, it is funnier than hell. How serious can we take ourselves, really? I mean, you know, come on. Man, how long are we on this planet for? 80 years if we're lucky? 80 years. I mean, what's it matter? I mean, does it really matter if we've got a doofus that's leading us all? I mean, we're all doofuses. I mean, think about the stories that y'all tell your friends. Think about the things that you talk about. Like, you're out at the backyard barbecue, right? Ladies are inside. They're doubling up on, you know, whatever's in season. Pinot Grigio or fucking Cabernet or whatever. You know, chillable red in a box, depending on where you're at. Dude, you're all out there drinking, I don't know. Let's talk about the guys that, uh, you know, your stuff shirt type. You're out there drinking uh, that fruity, you know, fruity beer. You know, the stuff that you put the fruit in. You know what I'm talking about. Not in Milwaukee where we're drinking, you know. Not that I'm in Milwaukee right now. I mean, I don't even drink beer, but, you know. I, I definitely don't drink a beer that somebody puts a piece of fruit in. Anyway, so you got these guys. They're sitting around the barbecue and, you know, let's say old Chet. Chet, for example, is, you know, he's flipping the burgers. and Are they telling stories about all the good decisions they've made in life? Or do you think they're sitting out there rehashing the glory days of when they were all in a fraternity in college and 
you know, when, uh, you know, Frank over here ran through the party at the, on a ate a pie or Delta felt a snatch house with his underwear on his head, you know, butt ass naked. They're probably telling those type of stories. You know I mean? Those are the things that people look back upon with the most fondness are the times that they've made the, you know, an ass out of themselves or somebody else has made an ass out of themselves. You don't typically tell stories about, well, you know, back in you know, 2021, I, I really made the right decision on the market that year. And I did it. You don't do that. You talk about the days when your boys would sit in the back of your house and break beer bottles over their own heads, you know, or, you know, roll manhole covers through telephone booths or, you know, the, the things that you would do that were on that edge. Like Hunter Thompson said, you know, a person can't truly know the edge until they've gone over it. And so I'm kind of looking at this with a different approach. I don't necessarily like Joe Biden. I don't think I like him as a person really, but I think he's funny. I think there's a lot of very comical aspects to, to what's going on right now in politics. And I think that we have to look at it as that because it's just absolutely hilarious what's happening. And to watch the outrage from all the different people in these different factions that are just, they're outraged by every fucking thing. And I've been guilty of it. I'm not going to lie. I've been guilty of it, you know? So I'm, I'm, in a sense, being a little hypocritical here, but I'm going to try and take a different approach to this from here on out. I'm going to try and look at this like it's a comedy show because it really is. I mean, what, you know, what's... What's the next four years going to do? I mean, we're literally like one misstep from blowing ourselves up. I mean, I live 52 miles outside of Yellowstone Park. I mean, honestly, if that thing goes, we're done. I mean, and I'm glad I live here because the rest of y'all are going to be having a hell of a time living in the Book of Eli times out there. At least it'll be all over for, for me and everybody I know. We'll just be looking up and going, oh, okay, we're out. We're all out anyways. You know, we're all gone. It doesn't matter, you know? We're all done. It doesn't matter. I mean, all this, all this stuff that we want to sit here and argue and, you know, dilly-dally and pitter-patter and fucking get wound up about, it's just really fucking stupid. And I've been guilty of it. And so I'm going to try and stop that. I'm going to try and stop being so serious about all this shit. You know, it winds me up. You know, would I like to see everybody have health care? You bet. Would it be hilarious to see everybody die of a pandemic? Maybe it would be. I don't know. I mean, <laughs> what the fuck? We're all going to die anyways. I mean, basically, we're already dead anyhow. I mean, you look at the, you know, what we think of as truth with scientists, you know, I mean, what the scientists say, right? Okay, and this is their argument that I have with people all the time. So, I go, okay, you want to sit here and you want to say, okay, so it's science. Okay, great. Let's argue about science. Who out there tells me that mankind is not fallible? All of us are. Look at Fauci right now. It's hilarious what's going on with Fauci. Fauci has gone from don't wear a mask, wear two masks, wear three masks, and now he wants to investigate where the origin of this virus came from. What does it even matter where it came from? It, it's there. It do, I mean, really, what does that change? Honestly, what does that change about anything? Where it came from? If we, if we definitively figured out that it didn't come from somebody eating bat soup. I mean, bat soup, lab, funded by the government, not funded by the government. No heads are going to roll. You know that. It's just going to be hilarity. It's going to just be another thing that's going to be in the news that everybody's going to get wound up about, which they already are. And you know what? It's fucking hilarious. It's funny. I mean, come on. This whole thing is just a, it's, it's, it's a whole comedy of errors. You know, I mean, I mean, you don't have a lot of stories about the great triumphs and the, the, the you know, the A1 decisions that people made in life. It's always about the fuck ups. Look at the news. When was the last time that you saw something on the news that was saying how great 
some decision was that some fucking politician made. I, I don't know. I can't think of one. I mean, we, we get off on watching sports bloopers. We get off on watching the fails that happen on YouTube. The human condition is that we, we laugh and we, uh, we, we almost gain joy from watching the failure of others, which is just bizarre. And, and then we're so sanctimonious about it, like we've never made mistakes and never made bad decisions and never made bad choices and never fallen flat on our faces when we all have. And when I look back on it and I tell stories about shit that happened, you know, back in my day, I mean, when, I mean, they're all stories that, I mean, they're hilarious, but they're, they're always about folly and, and, you know, being stupid and making bad choices. And, you know, most of the time coming out of those choices and, and being okay. And, and, and those are the polarizing stories that you hear. When was the last time? I mean, come on. Sit there and t- who's going to sit there and listen to a story? About? Well, you know, I had this math equation that I've just been working on for the last 32 years. And, you know, I finally got to the bottom of it. And it's really going to change everything. What's it going to change? I could be dead in 20 years. I'm 45. I might have 20 years left. The way I've treated myself, the way I've lived my life. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm fixing to go in, and, you know, tires burning, probably engine smoking on fire, paint, paint burned off the damn thing. You know, hopefully I just blow up. I don't even want to end up in the ground. Blow me up, you know. I mean, every, everybody sits there at work, they grumble about that fucking Biden or that ignorant Trump or blah, 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 and he's racist and you're homophobic and you're this and you're that and everybody's got these labels for everybody, but the fact of the matter is, is it's just all hilarious. It's all stupidity. I mean, we need to step back and we need to be able to laugh at ourselves because we don't ever do that. We take this all so seriously and it's really not that fucking serious. Think about it. Existentially, is it that serious what are you trying to do in life ask yourself that ask yourself what are you trying to do work that shitty cheese job punch a clock for somebody be a company asset get that good insurance you got that prescription health care I mean, what the what are you doing what are you doing what are you teaching your kids what are your kids going to do you're taking the best years of your life and, and you're, you're compartmentalizing them into these, these fucking boxes of what you are and you're not looking at what this life can be. You're not taking advantage of the opportunity that you have in front of you to do what you want to do. Now, I'm no beacon or glimmer of you know anything whatsoever. However, I... Excuse me, and it's not about me, but I started doing this thing. You know why? Because I enjoy doing it. And I'd like to think that I can bring value to others. I'd like to, to think that I could you know, um, bring um, an opportunity for others to speak, you know, and, and, and just be somebody that can have a conversation. I've always said my entire life that I could drink with bikers or bankers. And it's proven to be so. Um, because I love everybody. You know? And we, we, um, we, we put so much value on these trivial things that don't mean anything. They mean nothing. We lock one another up. You know? I mean, what the heck? Over, over drugs. I mean... Who's to say, you, I mean, this is what I don't understand, right? You can have a seven-year-old kid decide that they're going to change their gender and they'll take, they'll take these kids to a doctor and the doctor will literally mutilate or medicate children that are seven or eight years old, right? 
but a grown ass person can't go out and do fucking cocaine if they want to or shoot heroin. Why not? I mean, if you if you can legally go get your junk cut off or have junk put on or whatever it is they do, I don't know. That's not my thing. And that doesn't make me any kind of phobic. Okay, I, I don't give a shit what you do. It's your life. Do what you want to do with it. I don't, I'm not standing in the way. I don't give a shit. I couldn't care less what bathroom you use. I couldn't care less what junk you have under the trunk. I couldn't. I, I don't care. Change your name. Be whatever. I'm probably not going to call you Zizha Zuzha Zuzha. You want to be called a female name? Fine. I'll call you that. You know. You want to go from Andy to Angie? Okay. Fine. You want to go from, you know, Charlie to Charlie's. Okay, cool. I don't care. That's what you, want. you want to be called that? That's fine. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do the whole pronoun thing. It, it, this, it, that's, that's, this, I'm sorry. And there I'm going to use a trigger word. And everybody's going to get upset because I'm going to say that's retarded. But it is retarded. You know that if you were born a man, you're a man. You know what I mean? If you want, if you want to be something else, you want to be somebody else. That's fine. Go ahead. I don't care. And if you want to be called by a different name, I don't mind. I'm not. I, I, I'll call you by that name. I'll call you he or she. I'm not going to call you Zizha, 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 whatever the fuck all that nonsense. 140 goddamn pronouns. Fucking call me Wiley Coyote. I mean, can I identify as a fucking 45 year old? Uh, multi-billionaire with helicopters and living in a, you know, huge ass mansion in Argentina. I, I can. Does it make it fucking so? Does it make it fucking so? If that's what I identify with. Does it make it fucking so? I don't think so. So. I mean, it, 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 it's hilarious. And in, in, until we start laughing at this shit and laughing at each other and then laughing about all this crap, we're going nowhere. We're just going down a big fucking tire fire, you know? The thing's just, cr- it's just smoldering, you know? They're throwing more tires on it. And and we all sit here and we, we hang upon the words of Skeletor or, you know, that uh, mushroom head, whatever his name is, uh, Biden, I mean, it's time we start looking at these people as absolutely being hilarious. And it's probably time we just start turning our back on them. I'm just saying, you know what? Fuck you. You guys are hilarious. Thanks for the comedy show. But we're gonna just we're just going to go about our business. Okay, what you going to do about it? It's like, y- y'all are like 535 people that are trying to run us all. We're like 300 and some odd million. We're going to do what we're going to do. You know? I mean, it's all, but everybody's all just this, rah, rah, stuff, sure, law and order. How about treating people decent? How about treating people decent? How about understanding that we're all here for a short time? You know, that, that we all got a transition to make and it's coming before we know it. I mean, I never thought I'd be sitting here doing this at 45 years old, right? I still look at myself as an 18 year old kid who had a, a fastball and was going to play college baseball. This shit didn't work out, did it? Started swinging a hammer. I spent years and years beating the shit out of myself for no money. You know, and and I went to school. Not you know, I'm I'm not an unintelligent man. You know, I mean, I know that a lot of you people probably believe believe that to be so, but I, I do I do try and I do. You know, I do know a few things, believe it or not. A lot of it's working with my hands, and I don't think there's any dishonor in that. Just like I don't think there's any dishonor in being an author and writing books. You know? um, Just the idea that, you know, I mean, what one person does compared to another person is, you know, you're worth this, you're worth that. And then you've got these people that, have gone out and and procured, you know, billions of dollars. And for what? They're going to die just like you and me. Bottom line. And guess what? They're going to have shit kids. And the shit kids aren't going to do shit because they they're not going to live life because they're going to they're going to be born into this life of opulence, you know. And they're going to get 
you know, put in public office and put it in front of everybody. And they're, they're you know, they're going to end up like that fucking Hunter Biden, you know, smoking crack and making deals with uh, Russian oligarchs and, you know, Ukrainian oil companies and, you know, leading his geriatric dad around and lying, lying to get guns and everything else. And you know what? Who cares? It's fucking funny. It's fucking hilarious. I mean, hey, he did it. Great. Get on him. I mean, whatever, man. You know, the fucking guy pulled it off. I mean, that's pretty fucking good for a crackhead. I mean, really. I mean, you, you can say white privilege. You can say whatever you want. But I mean, dude's a fucking crackhead, and he pulled off. I mean, he, hey, guy's making 80, what, 83 grand a month. That's pretty good, though, for being a crackhead. I mean, if you ain't slinging rock and you're making 83 grand a month, that's pretty good. And it's funny. And, and, you know, and, and his old band, he falls upstairs. I mean, how funny is that? Has anybody seen that meme where Trump hits a golf ball and it hits Biden in the back of the head when he's falling up the fucking stairs? I mean, that shit is fucking hilarious. And if you don't think it's funny, then you have no sense of humor and you have no right being on this rock because guess what? That shit's fucking hilarious. I mean, y'all go back to the Kofifi or whatever where he made that mis- and I'm not, like I said, I'm not a Trumpster guy. I don't, I don't give two fucks. He's funny too. I mean, look at the guy. I mean, he, Jesus Christ, look at the fucking side profile of that dude. I mean, he, he looks like somebody fucking hit a, a, a rotten fucking pumpkin on top with, well, you remember those red fat bats we used to play about, about baseball with his kids? So he looks like looks like a fucking rotten pumpkin that got hit on top of the head with a red fat bat. Is that funny? I think so. Maybe you don't. Look at Biden. He looks like Skeletor too. I don't know what's up with that dude. But his appearance is ridiculous. I mean, he talks like he's got fucking beach sand in his fucking dentures. I don't even know what the hell. What's he talking through? It's fucking funny though. So I'm not going to, you know, guess what? I didn't pick it on him anymore. I don't care. They want to spend $6 trillion on whatever the fuck they think it is they're going to spend it on. Everybody gets no money and we just piss it away and the whole country goes down in flames. Then, hey, you know, welcome to the tire fire. I mean, might as well get out some fucking marshmallows and roast them in that shit. Get some poison in you and get some fucking cancer and check out early and laugh about it. I don't know. We all got to check out date anyways. And we're all just sitting here postponing the inevitable and acting like it's all so fucking serious. And like this all fucking means something. And it doesn't mean a fucking thing. Look at it. It doesn't mean anything. It doesn't matter. We all, oh, the children, the children are, the children are us. They have the same fate ahead of them that we have ahead of us. The same thing. And they're going to come to the same existential crisis at some point. I mean, let's be honest. Why not? We need a little more honesty. We need to quit taking this shit so seriously. I mean, really, what are we here for? What do you, I mean, ask yourself that. What in the fuck are you doing? People out there, those of you that have to go and pull that office space shit every day. You got your assigned parking place and your little parking pass on your car. You got to wear the right clothes and you go in and you, get, 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 and you get the lunch from... You know, you get your little cigarette break from 10 to 10, 15, and then you go go to your uh, little lunchroom, your cafeteria, and you have your bologna and cheese sandwich and a cup of come off me from 12 to 12.30, and then you're back in your cube, and then you turn, you get to turn your radio on and listen to whatever the fuck you listen to. And you sit there, and you fucking type the same fucking thing. Just every day for what? Two weeks of vacation, a month of vacation, some health care benefits? that you still have to pay for? Kind of seems a little futile, doesn't it? I mean, I mean, people, if you're not having an existential crisis out there about what the fuck it is you're doing in life, then I think you probably need to. I really do. I think you need to sit back and look at what this is all about. Are you here to live a quality life? Are you here to take advantage of this life you've been given? Or are you here to, to, to do your fucking TPS reports and make sure that you're not late and don't park in the wrong parking place because 
the meter may get you on that one. And, you know, you don't want your insurance to go up because, I mean, you know, they're the new mafia, you know. And, I mean, the whole insurance thing is just a fucking crock of shit. What the fuck is it that we're trying to do here? You know, I mean, let's face it. If, if Let's do the math here. You math magicians out there, like and comment. And if you can answer me this question, if you can answer me what six trillion dollars would come out to to each eligible um adult american citizen in this country i'll send you a free t-shirt do the math on that and let me know and then look at where they're planning on sending this fucking phony i mean might as well take these index cards that i write on for these shows and we just click clip them up into little pieces and just call them call them money Tuna fish cans, that's money. That's the same damn thing. We spend our lives chasing it. We don't even realize what we have. Work till you're 67, then you get your social security. Ooh, got that, it's a kicker. You've been paying into it your whole entire life. And you gotta go out and live on $1,200 a month. I mean, who can do that? Honestly, people, it's time to fucking have a little awakening here. It's time to sit back and ask yourself the question about what in the fuck are we doing? Why are we why are we sitting here living our lives based on this small group of oligarchs in this fucking stupid castle city out there that that they just sit there and make shit up? Fucking Pelosi, she's hilarious. You got, you got to look at how funny is that 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 fucking woman is the third most powerful individual in the fucking world. Nancy Pelosi is the third most powerful person on the planet. If we take ourselves seriously, you take your shitty cheese job seriously. Joe Biden gets up there and he can't even fucking say he doesn't even know the Declaration of Independence, <laughs> and that's the supreme leader of the world. And that's not funny. I mean, come on. If you can't see the comedy and the humor in that, then I don't even know what the fuck to tell you. I mean, it's it, it's it's time to take a step back from this shit, you know? Pump the brakes. You know? Ooh. You know? Act like it would, you know, back when people used to ride horses. You know, pull those fucking reins back for a second and look at this shit because this is just dumb. Everybody's working shitty cheese jobs, chasing this Skrilla. I mean, what are we going to do when the next $6 trillion comes? What's going to happen then? What's going to happen when money's not worth anything? And, you know, here's the thing is that we didn't decide money wasn't worth anything. The people didn't decide money wasn't worth anything. Speculators decided that shit. Governments decided that shit. And we let them do that for us. And we just sit back and we get all serious. And, you know, you're sitting there eating your fucking corn and fucking got corn stuck in your teeth and you're mumbling at the old lady at dinner table, you know, and you got the old fucking idiot kids sitting there that they're fixing to be idiot you, you know? I mean, you hate life. You're two seconds from sticking a gun in your mouth and blowing your fucking brains out because you fucking can't stand who you are because you're just a fucking sellout with your corn in your teeth and fucking mumbling about, you know, your, your fucking, you know, your, your, your stock and your 401k and you know, who parked in your place that day, and Jesus Christ. I mean, it, it's funny. It's absolutely hilarious. I mean, it, it is. It, it, it's funny, you know, and I'm just going to start making fun of it because I, don't, I have no other way of going about it because it, it's, it's really not even worth being serious about because, I mean, let's face it, I'm, I'm 45. I'm going to be dead in 20 years. I can guarantee it. I, might even, I probably won't even last that long. Who knows? I'm sure I got to, you know, who knows? I mean, none of us know. I mean, any of us could be dead tomorrow going into Walmart, you know, looking at a pack of below me and a cup of come off me and some fucking psychopath comes in with a, you know, an AR-15 and starts popping off caps and you're sitting there, you're looking at the sour cream can or whatever and all of a sudden you're fucking, guess what? You cherry pie on the wall and it's over. You're done. Bye. How was your How's your 401k doing? Your brains are all over the fucking wall, but how's your 401k? How's your health care benefits? How's your parking place? Hmm. How about your, uh, you, you know, you refinance your house. How's that doing? 
I'm sorry, your brains are all over the fucking side of a goddamn refrigerator case. But, you know, you got that life insurance. That's good. Fun life. Hmm? I don't know. Something to think about. That's what I'm here to do. Make you think about things a little bit, you know? Gain a little perspective on what the fuck it is you're doing because none of us really fucking know. We want to sit here and argue all this stupid fucking scientific fucking bullshit. You got the cookie gnome up there. He's fucking hilarious too. He changes his story every fucking week. Every it's like every couple of days that fucking cookie gnome's got something different to tell. He's just like a real cookie gnome, you know? I mean, think about a cookie gnome. Is he going to tell you the truth? No, he's selling fucking cookies. It's just like, like when's the last time the Girl Scouts told you the truth? You know, selling you the, the, the fucking, you know, them Girl Scout cookies have gone south. I'll tell you what, man. Them thin mints and them fucking Samoans used to be good. I bought some a couple of years ago and them things were dog shit. Little liars. <laughs> 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 fucking Girl Scout cookies are about as serious as the government is. It's a joke. You sit here and watch Fox News or MSBNC and worry about the sweater guy with his vaccinations and sticking needles in your arms and the COVID and getting the, f- I mean, it's just dumb. You know, wake up, people. Wake up. You got a short time here. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? What does accumulating wealth do? Walmart kids. It spoils your kids. You wonder why Warren Buffett isn't leaving any of his money to his kids? One of the richest men on the planet, and he's got no plans whatsoever to leave any money to his kids. Why do you think that is? I got to give it to the dude. Buffett is actually probably one of the, I mean, he's probably one of the most tolerable billionaires out there. I mean, Bill Gates is hilarious too. I mean, that sweater. I just, I mean, oh God. And that Kermit the Frog voice and everything, and I mean, and he's up on a pedestal because of why? Because he he made a little he made a computer. Well, way to go! I guess I'm talking to you on his invention right now. So, thanks, Bill. But I still ain't putting your jab in my arm. It's early in the morning. I'm gonna get this thing put together. But you know, I'll think about this. Just ask yourself if you watch this. Ask yourself, what the fuck am I doing? What am I doing? Are you happy? Are you happy and you know it? Clap your hands. Did, is Jesus is Jesus going to save you on Sunday? Give ten percent of your 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 hard earned wealth to the little pot, the little pa- the little pan at the hand, the little pan, the little thing, the plate. Do you really think there's a magic man? The magic man is you. You make your own magic. Until you figure that out, guess what? You're going to be stuck. I'm just saying. Food for thought, people. Know that when I tell you all this, I love you. Um, we're going to cut out here. I don't even know what I'm going to play to get us out of here. I think I'm going to do a little uh, um, a dub effects with uh, Charlie Tuna. This is a good cut. All right. Peace out. Love y'all.
next to you I'm doing all the things you want me to I can see the look in your eyes So I start to realize I've been playing games with the law all wrong Well here I came come and done you wrong And I know the life I would say That you weren't the one that got away I've been standing here next to you I'm doing all the things you want me to I can see the look in your eyes So I start to realize I've been playing games for the law Well, here I came, come and done your own If you want to, hey, but what you willing, what you won't do? Let me tell you, soon as love takes a hand, do up your body, it ain't nothing you can can't do. Everybody that felt that from this price, they're trying to get your love, want to get their shit right. It done happen from poor folks to rich types. Your woman treated because she say that you don't hit right, but she don't understand a man is a psycho. Bad sex for booze, he jealousy might grow. <laughs> When they opened up the door, it was the sight of his life. He sold his brother on the floor with his wife. Now, can you tell me you're the man? Would you take that? Or would you reach for his neck and try to break that? You be the judge, yeah. See, love makes you do the strangest things. When it affects your heart, then it changes things. I'm gonna get down on the clouds above. I'm gonna sing loud to the ones I love. I'm gonna take charge in the life I lead. Never gonna let go to the air I breathe. And I'm gonna work hard for the things I want. I'm gonna show respect to the things I've got. And I'm gonna Right here in the place to be Not being no one else, only ever being me Are you ready for the comeback? Soon to talking about love on this drum track One fact, all good, but in one act Love will stick you in the ass like a thumbtack It's no good when you're dealing with the friendship One-sided dog give and there's no get Certain boy, whole script, did a slow flip You keep the people you trust next to your shit That's when you're dealing with love Certain people tend to walk that line Then behind your back, talk that grind When you're dealing with love Chick can lead to a domestic crime Dead bodies in the chalk outline But when you're dealing with love, be careful It ain't nothing on this earth it can't compare to Beware for certain false words that appear true And yeah, yeah, that's what you got to do When you're dealing with love Well, in another life I would say That you weren't the one that got away I've been standing here next to you Doing all the things you want me to Well, I can see the look in your eyes And so I start to realize That I've been playing games for the law Well, here I came, come and done you wrong Yes, sir. Ben Double Facts and Charlie Tuna. Stop playing. <laughs>